communication, there are various components which are involved in the process of communication. And we need to see role of every component so as to make our communication effective. At the end of this session, you will be able to discuss different components of communication. Let us see component of objective. We can also refer to this as aim of communication. Why do we communicate? What are various objectives of communication? We may have some intention in mind so as to start communication. We may be aiming at some changes. Our communication reflects the need which is in the mind of our sender or the person who starts communication. We may also have some effect intended in our mind. So as to achieve this intended effect, we start communication. Let us see how these objectives work. Let us see examples of these reasons or objectives of communication. Raga wants to seek permission of his mother for picnic. So starts talking with her. So here need of initiating dialogue with his mother is the intention to seek permission. This is how because of some intention we start communication. Sometimes we aim at some changes in the other person. Raghav's exams are approaching and his father wishes to make him realize this and focus on studies. So he initiates discussion over dinner. So here father aims at some changes in Raghav. Father wants that Raghav should study hard. Instead of discussing about picnic, he should focus more on studies. And indirectly he wants Raghav to realize this. This is why Raghav's father initiates discussion over dinner. Sometimes our communication reflects the need for which we initiate discussion or communication. Raghav receives call from his friend Neha. Now Neha has missed her previous class and she wants to know what topic was taught in that previous class by the teacher. Neha makes the call and from that call, from that conversation, Raghav comes to know that Neha is in need of some information about her miss class. Sender tries to communicate or initiate communication with some intended effect. The sender wishes that that intended effect should come into the picture at the end of the communication. Here, Raghav's friends want him to join for picnic. They want him to get excited about it and to achieve intended effect, they start describing the picnic spot. They try to encourage and motivate Raghav so that Raghav agrees to come for picnic and convinces his parents. Sender, sender is an essential component of communication. Sender is a person or a system which starts communication by delivering the message. By viewing this definition, you must have realized that sender is the person or sender is a system who starts the communication. If there is no sender, communication will not start. So sender starts delivering some message and we say that communication has begun. You might be wondering why sender is a person or a system. Many a times human beings themselves start communicating. But wherever there is situation where human being cannot impart information or human being cannot start communication, human being uses some different channel or some different system device to communicate with others. For example, if we are getting messages which are automated, then the system which is delivering us those automated message becomes senders. If we put alarm on our cell phone, then early morning 
who wakes us up? The cell phone. So cell phone is sending us message, wake up. That's how we can say that sender always need not be a person. It can be a system also. Let us take examples about Raghav. Raghav wants to seek permission of his mother for picnic. So starts talking with her. Here Raghav starts talking to his mother. So Raghav is initiator of this communication and speaking to mother is initiated by Raghav. He is the communicator. He is the sender of messages. The messages are sent to his mother. So sender is the person or system who or which starts the process of communication by delivering the message. When we say that Raghav's exams are approaching and his father wishes to make him realize this and wishes him to focus on studies, so he initiates discussion over dinner, we can clearly see that father is the person who has started dialogue over dinner. So father is sending messages to Raghav. Here father becomes the sender. Raghav receives call from his friend Neha who missed her previous class. So she wishes to know about the topic talked in the her previous class. Here though Raghav is receiving call and Raghav will talk to Neha, Neha is the main sender of the message because Neha has made a call and Neha has initiated dialogue over phone with Raghav. So Neha is a sender. When Raghav's friends want him to join for picnic and they start describing the picnic spot while sitting in the canteen, they are the persons who are describing the picnic spot with some intention in mind. So whenever sender initiates dialogue, he or she or the group has some intention in mind and to fulfill that intention or to achieve some effect, he or she or they initiate the dialogue, initiate communication. So they are senders of the communication. What are various roles of sender? As we have seen, there is always some objective of communication, some intention of communication which is decided by the sender. Sender first decides that I have this objective, this aim in my mind and so as to achieve this aim, I will initiate communication. How to initiate this communication? How should I talk or how should I convey message to the learner? This is the decision again sender needs to take. You can see in the picture the teacher wants that learner to learn something new. The intention is clear and the teacher has also decided, selected some medium. Now learner is interacting with this medium but the role of selecting proper medium always lies with the teacher. That clearly means that teacher always need not lecture or impart information through her verbal medium. She can select any medium but her objective should be clear and teacher should possess role of selecting appropriate medium. Though sender selects proper medium, immediately communication may not begin. Any sender needs to analyze the situation before starting communication. The message may be already ready with the learner, uh, with the sender. For example, teacher might have prepared material, teacher might have converted messages into proper medium, into proper form. But teacher will plan when to initiate this communication and accordingly initiate the communication. Many a times we need to take decision which subject to be taught when. After learners return from playground, always teachers give them some buffer time to relax, to settle down and transit from play mood to some serious mood if they want to teach them subjects like science, geography or teachers can choose 
to maintain their mood as it is and make science or geography a fun. Now when actual communication starts, the form of communication comes into the picture. So as per the medium selected and as per appropriate situation, sender gives some form to the message. Teachers also need to decide about the form of the message. The form can be verbal, non-verbal. In non-verbal, there may be many forms such as body language, gestures, pictures, illustrations, photographs, videos. Selecting proper medium and giving appropriate form is teacher's responsibility as a sender. Once everything is ready, sender delivers the message. This final stage of making the message reach to the receiver is responsibility of the sender. So right from deciding aim of communication up to the actual delivery of the message, entire responsibility lies with the sender. See this picture. The girl is showing ants to her friend. The friend is astonished to see the ants walking in a queue. Here, the boy is the receiver of the message. The girl is talking to him and pointing out the queue of ants. So receiver is the person or maybe a system who or which receives the message. Message reaches to the receiver after starting from the sender. The way sender can be a person or a system, even receiver can be a person or a system. Or even receiver can be a human being but receiving messages from a system. For example, if Sheila is driving a car and she is referring to a GPS system, then that GPS system is guiding Sheila. So now here, Sheila is not receiving messages from other human being, but Sheila is receiving messages from a system. Sheila is a receiver of this message. Let us see this example. Sohil is giving oral instructions to the search engine and the search engine is producing results. You must have heard about or you might have also used this kind of search engines where we don't need to type keywords. We just give oral, oral instructions. We just spell out the keyword and the engine searches all relevant information about that keyword. Here, who is the receiver? The receiver is the search engine and the machine on which the search engine is resting. Now, this engine is receiving oral instructions from Sohil and producing intended results. Let's understand Tina's example. Tina and her two friends have prepared some topic. Teacher has assigned them topic, types of memory, which they have prepared and now they are presenting to their class. Now, who are the receivers? Because Tina's group is presenting, they become sender and the entire class who are listening along with the teacher become receiver. This is a situation where teacher is also in the role of receiver instead of being in the role of the sender. Do you like this picture? Here, who is the receiver? Teddy is the receiver. So, receiver is listening to the message. Receiver is the person who receives message. It may be a person or an animal or a system or a group of persons. Understanding message is their responsibility. Let's see what all a receiver does. First, receiver has to attend to the message. So whenever sender sends a message and whenever receiver understands that some message is reaching to the receiver, him or her, then 
receiver first attends to the message. After attending to the message, receiver receives, perceives the message. So, it's not only about attending, but you need to perceive that message in its correct form. You should know what should be the language or what should be my own understanding to perceive this message and then only I can analyze message. So receiver's role does not stop at perceiving the message but receiver needs to analyze the message, tries to understand nature of the message, tries to understand content of the message. After analyzing the message, the receiver needs to give feedback. Basically, receiver responds back to the sender saying that I have understood the message and this is my feedback. This feedback may be positive or negative. But this is just the process of letting the sender know that I have received your message and this is my response to your message. Giving this feedback is a responsibility of the receiver and for giving this feedback, receiver again needs to select some message, some medium and some form. Exactly the way sender has sent the message, receiver also needs to send the feedback. What is message? Message is the content of communication. In communication process, we see that sender transmits something to the receiver. Sender sends something to the receiver. Sender communicates with the receiver. What is that the sender communicates? The actual content of that communication is the message. So if a sender is singing a poem for the receiver, then that poem, message of the poem, meaning of the poem becomes content. That is the message. When we understand what is communication, we always learn that communication is exchange of ideas, thoughts and feelings. These ideas, information, thoughts, feelings are the messages. What gets transmitted, transacted, transferred from sender to receiver is the message. Now sometimes these messages are in the form of objects. Do you see the cute teddy offering rose to someone? Now this rose is an object. But yes, that rose itself is a message because that rose is conveying some feelings. This written words happy birthday is also a message. This can be conveyed orally or through written message, maybe in the form of greetings. Sometimes spoken words are messages. When teacher lectures in the class, his or her spoken words are the message which reach to the students. Sometimes we are recording our voice and we are trying to reach to the receivers. So our recorded voice also becomes a message. Message is very important element in communication. Nature of communication depends upon the message to be conveyed. The entire communication process changes if the nature of message changes. As you have seen in these examples, the nature of communication changed because of the message. When message was in the form of feelings, nature of communication was in the form of objects or sometimes spoken words or sometimes written words. Message is a signal or combination of signals that serves as a stimulus for a receiver. You see some signal or you hear some signals. Language is also a combination of signals. So, all these signals received by a receiver work as stimuli. We get a stimulus from the sender 
and then we tend to respond to it. Even angry mother's eyes are stimulus for a child. Teacher's angry face or happy face can be stimuli to the learners. The form of message is actually some signs and some symbols. Whenever we talk about verbal communication, we use some language and we all know that the language is a combination, a set of some signs, some symbols. In every communication, in every culture, there are certain signs which are understood by the sender as well as the receiver. And these sets of signs and symbols work as messages. Responsibility of the sender is to understand the set of signs and symbols known by receivers and use exactly the same signs. For example, if receivers are not understanding signs of the sender, there cannot be communication. You have always seen that to communicate with some hearing impaired persons, special signs are used. These signs are perceived by the hearing impaired person because the hearing impaired person cannot listen and understand the verbal messages. So, if the person, the sender uses the same signs which the receiver knows, communication is always effective. What do we mean by a channel? Channel is a vehicle through which signals are sent. We see that our message is a set of signs and symbols. So, to impart, to send the signals from sender to receiver, there should be some channel, there should be some vehicle. Whenever we talk face to face, our voice is carried with the air. So, air becomes a channel, a vehicle to pass on our audio signals. Sometimes we talk over telephone, over cell phone, we send some emails. So, we use various vehicles as channels of communication. There are various channels of communication. We keep on communicating with different different channels which are available by the environment, which are decided as per the need and intention and which channels get associated with the sender as per the nature of the message. Many a times we are interacting with each other face to face. For example, all our classroom teaching. The channel is mainly teachers, presence, her or his verbal expressions, information imparting, happening in the real class. Many a times the channel is written. Written words can be message. The channel is electronic. When we record videos, when we show some experiments through videos, or whenever there are interactive packages in through which learners interact with the content. There may be some electronic devices through which learners interact, experiment and learn something. Teachers and learners and friends body language, facial expressions, tone of voice, touch or order also play significant roles as channels. You all know that our facial expressions play major role when we communicate. Our tone of voice also matters. Simple touches matter. May it be a teacher's profession or a doctor's profession. Sometimes order play role as a channel. For example, fragrances. If you want to make happy to somebody, you may have a fragrant flower or some scented greeting card and the order will play role in communication as a channel. Sometimes when we talk about mass communication or distance communication, 
we require electronic media. We require pair of wires, coaxial cables, or maybe a band of radio frequencies, a beam of light. All these become channels for us. We listen radio programs. We receive communication through cables, television, internet, computer. Everything works as channels for us. Simple beam of light helps us in getting some signals. The entire signal system all over the world works and plays a major role in traffic management. Every communication happens in a particular context. What is this context? Context of the communication is environment in which the communication happens. Now imagine if the environment is very rich, it's very suitable for the learning process, then certainly learning will be very enjoying. Learning will be effective. If we have to learn about the sky, then we need to go in the open instead of reading books. If the environment is gloomy, if the environment is not suitable for the communication, the entire communication process gets affected. So it's teacher's duty, teacher's role, teacher's responsibility to select appropriate environments for learners to learn effectively. Every communication has dimension of time and place. Any communication starts at some time and ends at some time. So we can exactly say in during which period for how much time a particular communication has taken place. Also, there is always a context of place for any communication. Where did communication take place can be answered by analyzing the communication process. May it be a distance. With social media also, we can say that this particular communication happened on this social media, maybe on Facebook, maybe through Hangout, maybe through WhatsApp, but we can talk about its context. Context is very important and every sender plays a major role in this. The sender needs to realize strengths and weaknesses of this context, of the atmosphere before communicating. For example, the context itself may create many hindrances, difficulties, obstacles in the communication. Simple example is, if there is a lot of noise outside, then we cannot focus, students cannot focus in the classroom. So teacher gets disturbed while teaching or even learners may get disturbed while doing some activities. Teacher as a sender needs to understand strains and weaknesses of the context. Fixed furniture can prove as a weakness. Loose chairs may prove as a strength if teacher wants to conduct group activities. We have always seen that communication becomes effective if the receiver gives some feedback to the sender. See this picture. Once you receive some gift, if you smile and say thank you, then the person who gives you gift is very happy, pleased and satisfied. If you say, oh wow, I like this gift, I never had this kind of gift with me, then the sender will be happier. If you don't understand anything, what your teacher is talking to you, and if you keep quiet, teacher will never come to know that you are not understanding anything. So, if we are teachers, it's our responsibility to create some environment, to create such a situation that the learner also gives feedback of communication. This feedback, gestures, smiles become our motivators in communication. Let us see the classroom situation. Whenever learners give some feedback to teachers, then the process can be more effective. Even teachers can improve their process 
according to feedback received from the learners. Small gestures on their faces or commenting, asking or just saying, oh, understood, help teachers or senders to improve the communication. Even if there is constructive feedback, corrective feedback, the communication process can be corrected. While giving feedback, receiver is always in the role of a sender. Whenever sender sends any message to receiver, receiver's reaction to it, receiver's response to it is a feedback. Now while giving this feedback, the receiver selects message. So feedback itself becomes a message and receiver imparts that. Receiver chooses some channel, receiver chooses some mode and receiver passes on this feedback to the sender. As I mentioned earlier, this feedback becomes a new message. So this message can be either verbal or non-verbal. Either you just smile, give some gestures, show some anger or you verbally say that. Or sometimes you can also show some tags. For example, in some competitions you might have seen that the examiner only shows a tag with some scores on it and that becomes feedback of that particular examiner. So message as a feedback can be in any form. As we saw that feedback can be in the form of any message, even the channel can differ. You may not immediately give feedback by the same channel which sender has used, but you may choose a different channel for it. For example, you may leave the sender and then while traveling, you may just send thank you message. So this channel becomes a different channel and not as the same of the sender. Sometimes we send some note. Sometimes we write letters, sometimes we make phone calls or sometimes we receive something via distance through some distance mode but the feedback is given when we actually meet. So these are different messages, different channels in the form of feedback.